In 1997 and 2000, I photographed some buildings in Croydon and have come back in 2024 to see what's changed. I'll try and highlight some interesting features and provide a bit of history. Please stay to the end for all the detail. There's been a lot of change. I hope you enjoy. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience, change seen through images. Croydon is located here in South London. For reference, looking at a map, this is where East Croydon Station is, and then these are the locations we're looking at first. Let's start with the Hospital of the Holy Trinity, which is on North End. It's also known as the Whitgift Hospital, and it was actually built between 1596 and 1599. Very old in the context of Croydon, and the whole of the country. This is a Grade 1 listed building, and, as expected, pretty much unchanged. But look around it. To the left we can see Alders, which was still in business then. And in the foreground we can see construction vehicles, which I think are actually laying track for the trams. The trams actually came into service around 2000, so that could well be right. I have a few pictures of the High Street. In this one, as well as other things, we can see the Grants Building, which actually dates from 1895 but in the 1990s was boarded up and being developed. This is a similar view in 2024 where we can see the change. I also took a picture of the arcade next door which looked like it had already been renovated then and there was a tanning salon there. There's also another couple of points to note. The one hour photo sign, rarely seen now but was quite common then when photos had to be developed chemically. Also the path and road layout have changed. In 1997 there seems to have been a brick island with plants growing in it. These have all now been removed, the path widened and it's now mainly pedestrianised. Trees have also been planted. On the other side of the road the building surrounding St George's Walk was still very much in use in the 1990s Whereas by 2024, it's all boarded up. Now, moving a little way along, in 1997, Millet occupied this Victorian building with a coned roof and very prominent position at the junction of the High Street on one side and Surrey Street on the other. The building looks very similar, but the occupiers changed and the road layout is different as well. Now, carrying on, further down the high street. I think I took this picture of what um, I thought was an Art Deco building because it looks so different. Well, in 2024 it is still there, though with a different occupier. What I find really interesting is the street furniture, how some has changed but also some has not. In a sign of the times, the phone box in the distance has gone and the street lighting has changed, probably to LED. But also look at the footpath. Incredibly, it seems to have hardly changed, with the brick edging and even this scar in the tarmac still there. 27 years on? Moving further out, the Swan and Sugarloaf. Now, this is interesting. If we keep heading out of Croydon on the A235, the Brighton Road, we come to a Tesco's. And this building actually used to be a pub. The artwork at the top of the building is still there, as is the old pub name. The main difference is the lower pub signage has gone and the lower windows are now blocked off. Also, the flower stall has gone and the cars are obviously quite different. I also took a picture of the side of the building, I think because of these impressive chimneys. The chimneys are fortunately still there in 2024, but the old wooden gates from the pub have gone and interestingly, there's now a fire escape as well. Now, coming back into the centre of Croydon, we're looking at this area. So starting with the Croydon Municipal Buildings, they were constructed between 1892 and 1896 and include a, a clock tower and are actually a Grade 2 listed building. This magnificent Victorian building looks fairly unchanged in those 27 years. 
Now, finishing with this picture taken from the Park Lane area and looking over the Queen's Gardens in 1997 and then in 2024, the building is pretty much the same, but the gardens have been re-landscaped. And if we come out a bit, we can see uh, some of the new building that's on the left. In this picture from 1997, we've got the Nestle Tower Block on the left with the subway underneath it and looking to the right, Croydon College. This is a similar view in 2024 and there has been a lot of change. Though the Nestle building and Croydon College are still both there, however, the big change is in the skyline. Looking towards Croydon College, which has recently been refurbished, we can see these giant blocks. They are just behind the college and near East Croydon Station. What I've really found strange was normally when looking at change, I found that generally more greenery, i.e. bushes and trees, have been added over the years. But in this case, looking at the picture, although it's not quite the same angle, there's actually less. Also, the Nestle building has scaffolding around it. Nestle actually moved out in 2012 and it has been undergoing some refurbishment since then. Looking around in 2024, we can see the Fairfield Halls, which again have been recently refurbished. I didn't photograph them in 1997, but interestingly I did capture the building's reflection in this photo. I've tried to recreate it here in 2024. Then moving on to the year 2000, where all the pictures I took were actually on Mint Walk. And I believe I took them because I could not believe the amount of plants and greenery growing out of the gutters and brickwork. Especially when the boarded up windows all seem to be done so neatly. Well, as a point of note, also look at the old phone number on the Victoria and Albert sign. Well, they've all completely gone and been replaced with this office block by 2024. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll be making more similar ones, so please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images.